Hi everyone, this is Bill from YouTube. So today I'm going to be talking about, for the Google Drive, an example of how you could use it in your own classroom. So I use Google Drive during my last year of teaching, and the way that I set it up was that every student had their own digital portfolio. Now we use that for a few different things. So if we go into here, you can see, for example, this is my 8th graders, period 4. This is what the class Google Drive folder looked like. Now you can see everyone's individual portfolios are in here, as well as we have some worksheets, some things like rubrics. So, for example, if they're doing their project on uh, creative value scales, they can go in here to see what's expected of them. Now we also have things in here like the syllabus, and here is the class selfie. Because I did this as an example to show how when you take a picture, how quickly, if you have the Google Drive app, how you can instantaneously upload it into here so the whole class can see. Now the way that I set this up, before I show you how I organize it more, was that I had each student make their own portfolio. So I'll make one for me. And once they had that folder, what they did was they right-clicked it and they hit share. Then all they had to do was type in my email address, hit send, and then that would be shared with me. So this is an easy way, because when you have everyone in the class do it, what winds up happening is in your shared with me folder. So then when something's shared with me, I can right click it and hit add to my drive. So let's see, this was a document someone shared with me. When I add it to my drive, it's going to show up right in here. Now what I could do is just drag it around and drop it all into the folder that I want it to go into. Which is how I put all my students' folders into here. But now, even though it's all in here, they have no way of seeing the whole folder. So the way that I did that was if you right-click the folder that you drag them all into and hit share, you can make it so that anyone with the link can view and just send this link out to the whole class so they can access it. Inside the folder, the way that we organized it was uh, by each project, they made a folder for it. Now inside that folder, we usually did a folder for the brainstorm part. So that this is where they would take photographs of any sketches or any practice work. Uh, an inspiration board for things that they were looking at for ideas for the project. This is a really great way to make sure that the kids aren't stealing anything, um, that they're not directly copying. When they have this, they take a little bit more ownership, I think, over really citing where they're getting ideas from, but making sure that they're coming up with their own. Uh, and then also adding the process photos. Uh, so here we have some process photos from this student's work. Now, this was a great way to have them also talk about how to properly photograph things. So this student did a pretty good job with photographing it. Also, they made a stop motion video, which you can see in one of my other posts. For these large files, it's great to have them backed up in there. And it's as easy as that when you have the whole class doing it. It's great because they can kind of see what each other is working on, which I think is helpful. This way they can be a little bit more collaborative. Um, and it makes them open up about what they're making and how they're sharing it with the classroom. So that's the Google Drive and that's the digital portfolio. There's the quick version of it. So let's take a look at just one more. And uh, what I really like about having the process folder is it really lets students document some of their work and really see how much they grow and how much they learn through the process. So that's it for the Google Drive. I uh, hope some of you got some ideas from that. Thanks for watching.